Good afternoon, folks. This is Steve from Real Progressives. Coming to you very, very somber. Not that I expected this to be any different, but looking at the way the votes at this convention platform uh, sessions are going, it's quite obvious that they just do not give a shit what we have to say. They don't care about our issues. They don't care about anything that we're doing. They don't care about us in the least. I predicted this a long time ago. I am more than happy to stick with Bernie anywhere he takes us other than into Hillary's arms. And as you saw in the news media here recently, they've tried to make it out to be that Bernie is saying, yeah, I'm going to vote for it, no problem. That's not what he said at all. That's not what he said at all. So it's up to us. It's absolutely up to us. I, I mean, I'm flabbergasted that anybody is standing by and still defending this crap. It's, it's amazing to me that even the lukewarm vote blue people would support this crap. I posted an article earlier today that talked about how um, the people, the Democratic establishment types that are Hillary supporters who even side with us on the TPP, those same people, came away from the meetings saying, yeah, you know, this TPP thing is it's just a really bad deal, but I just can't go against our sitting president. We can't say anything that would go against our sitting president. That is what their focus is. That is what their focus always is. It's not about what's good for us. It's not about us people that are gonna have to clean up our lives as our jobs get exported overseas. They're worried about crossing a sitting president. They're worried about taking a stand. So I've tried to explain this to people and people say, oh, you want Trump in there. And I cannot express this strongly enough. When you see these vote blue people talking about how they have to support the nominee or the, how they have to support Obama as opposed to supporting fighting against the TPP. When you see that, that is a preview of things to come. And we've got history on our side that shows us exactly that this is how they will always be. They they will not stand for our issues, folks, no matter what they do. And they're not even hiding it anymore. I mean, they are so sure that they can beat Donald Trump without our help. They would rather have Brent Scowcroft. They would rather have Kagan. They would rather have all these neocons that have come out of the woodwork supporting Hillary. They would rather have APAC. They would rather have the warmongers of the world on their side than have us on their side. Because they just know that progressives are a bunch of sorry wimps. They just know we're gonna fall in line because we're so afraid of Trump. I have reviewed stuff over and over again. And don't get me wrong, Republicans in general are scary. The words they say are scary. The things they do are scary. The things they do cost people's lives. But the Democrats are every, and when I say both sides, I'm not one of these freaks that says the both siders crap. I'm talking substantively, they are the same. And this platform committee is showing that every minute of every day. There is no hope for us in the Democratic Party. Again, I'm going to stand with Bernie. If Bernie says, let's try and fight from the inside, let's do it. Let's do whatever we have to do to support Bernie. Up to any kind of talk of supporting the shill. But the fact of the matter is, is that patience is a virtue until it's not a virtue. And that's kind of the subject of this discussion. There's nothing that we can grandstand and do. Most of our gestures will be token gestures at this point, to be perfectly honest with you. 
So I'm, I, I've fought for a year for Bernie. I'm going to ride this out to the end and fight for him to get the White House. If that doesn't happen, it's not going to be the end of the world for me because the fact of the matter is, is that no matter what, we have got to carry this fight on and we've got to carry it on harder than ever because you're looking at what the Democratic Party is. Every single thing from, from trying to work with Palestine, we're not talking about you know, making Hamas out to be, you know, some humanitarian organization. We're talking about recognizing their fundamental right to be human beings and live. Cornell West said it fantastically. If you ever get a chance to look at what Cornell said, he was spot on. And they shot the whole thing down. They literally shot every single thing of it down. Chris Hedges is out there telling us, Hey, you know, we need to take over the streets of Philadelphia. Boy, I love Chris Hedges. He's got my vote. <laughs> but he's not running for anything. But Chris Hedges has got Philadelphia right. We need to flood Philadelphia to let them know. You may try to snow us. You may try to rob us of our voice. But we are going to fight like hell. We are not giving up this fight, no matter what you do. If you put Bernie up there on the cross and sacrifice him so that you can go, see, we killed progressivism. You're in for a rude awakening. My hope is that all of you understand how futile it is for us to try to reform this party. You know, there's a, I think it's Go Green 619. Look, whatever. I mean, that's great. I, I, you know, I'll support any progressive movement whatsoever. Anything that pulls us away from these neocons. Anything that pulls us away from these friggin' flaccid, vapid, vacuous, worthless pieces of shit. But I'm telling you right now, We've ridden the Bernie train this far. I'm not getting off of it. I don't believe the man is going to ever support Hillary, especially after watching the way this convention thing went down. The Dem exit is following soon. There is no way in hell anybody with a conscience can support these people. And if you fall for the Trump fear porn, you know, this whole thing about the Brexit and the Donald Trump issue and how this plays out and xenophobia and stuff like that. Let me tell you what the deal is there. I was sitting there trying to put it in my brain what the difference between Greece and Europe was, or England was. And the reality is that Greece not only bought into the EU, but they bought into the Euro. Great Britain never bought into the Euro, they just bought into this trade union. So when they extracted themselves from the trade union, what they basically said was this. We are looking to be sovereign. It's not xenophobia. That's just the latest bullshit talk. The fact is neoliberalism is hurting everyone, but the people with the money, but the global nationals, the old money, the oligarchy, the global oligarchy, folks. We're not talking conspiracy stuff here at all. My God, I, this is just straight up, in-your-face stuff. Verifiable to anybody with a clue. Anybody that's got more than five seconds of bandwidth to go look it up is not hard to figure out. Everything that we're fighting for will be paid lip service to at best. And as you see by this platform committee, you realize they're not even going to give us lip service. They don't give a shit. That's got to be pretty sobering. But I'll tell you what it is for me. For me, it's liberating. For me to understand now that in writing, right to our face, we can see clearly the Democratic Party has given us the middle finger and said, we don't give a shit about you. We are in bed to foreign countries like Israel. We are in bed with corporations. And you, your needs... You'll be met when we feel like meeting them, if we feel like meeting them, and if they match with our globalist agenda. And right now, our desires, our needs, 
they don't match with the globalist agenda. We want silly things like healthcare. We want, you know, free stuff like, you know, education so we can compete and keep our families eating. You want crazy stuff like, I don't know, family medical leave so that when our mother or father is dying, that we can help take care of them or a child is born, we don't have to toss them in a daycare. Yeah, crazy stuff like that, you know, needy, you know, non-responsible stuff like that. The Democratic Party has proven itself to be an unworthy steward of our talents and time and treasures. If you're still holding on to this corpse, I don't know what to tell you. Again, my thought is, and this is just a thought, maybe you all agree with me, maybe you don't. My thought is Bernie's given them every chance to hang themselves, given them every chance to prove what just despicable human beings they are and prove how corrupt they are. Some of us, that's like finding out Santa Claus doesn't exist. Some of us, it's validation of things we've known for an awful long time. Either way, the truth is coming out. So I don't know what your travel plans are. I don't know what your availability is. They've made life so difficult for most of us that getting away to go to Philadelphia, to stay in a hotel, to even camp, is quite an undertaking. But folks, shit is real. This is it, man. This is ground zero of our revolution. The election, the November, that's just going to be a friggin' show. And they're going to rattle the cages. They're going to talk about xenophobia and how we can't let another bigot. Even Bernie has been playing this. And I think part of that is that Bernie is trying to make sure that they don't have something else to use against him. That he can sort of, you know, stay with the highbrow stuff and just sort of keep that nonsense away. Because you know, they tear him down for everything. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky this. Pie in the sky that. My life, it's not pie in the sky. Your life is not pie in the sky. Your kids' lives are not pie in the sky. <sighs> you know, doing a little bit of research on Honduras has really, really driven home the point of exactly how dangerous a Clinton presidency would be. And I'm not talking about because she'll kill more indigenous people through her, you know, helping out these coups. I'm talking about her supporters and her surrogates are more concerned with defending her just like these incompetent, like, that's wrong, they're very competent, just like these wretched criminals at the DNC convention platform committee, these assholes, these people, what they have done is shown us beyond the shadow of a doubt that they will never join arms with us to push back against their people, against their blues. They won't criticize the blues. They won't stand with us against an unfit or unjust war. They won't stand with us if their blue president decides that we're gonna enter into a really, really bad trade deal or a really, really bad war or cut something, they're gonna have a ready-made excuse. Correct the record, we'll have their talking points for them. And they'll run around and repeat this stuff and you and I will be left off onto the corner like the crazy uncle at Thanksgiving dinner that nobody wants to talk to. You know, do you wanna be relegated as other? Look, I don't mind being considered outside the system. I don't mind being labeled whatever the fuck you want to label me. Excuse my French. Sorry, that was, <laughs> I don't do that very often. But the fact of the matter is, I want to be able to look you all in the eye and look my family in the eye and know that I'm speaking truth as best I can. And the best truth I can tell you is any kind of belief that they are trying to meet our needs is a blatant lie. It's a blatant lie. 
I see it. See you in Philly, speak the truth. Guys, bring those comments in. This is what we're all about. You need to be strong in your beliefs, strong in your convictions. I had some horrible people. And when I say horrible, I'm talking about a sick SOB whose name I won't give the credit of day to. Did all kinds of trolling things, doxing. We've already talked to the police about this individual. But it's those sorts of people that support Hillary. Those sorts of people that we're actually fighting against. They absolutely hate everything we're trying to do. They hate that we're fighting against fracking. Did you see that? They blocked the fracking. Worrying about the death penalty, they don't care. They just want to troll people fighting for righteousness. And when I say righteousness, I'm talking about for the 99% so that we can survive. I hope every last one of you can find a way to get to Philly. I hope every last one of you finds your voice, finds your courage, finds your conviction. Don't let the mainstream media distract you because this is bigger than Bernie, folks, no matter what they do to him. I don't care if they drive spikes in his legs and in his hands. I don't care if they shave him and make him march down the street doing the walk of shame like they did on Game of Thrones. I don't care what they do to him. I mean, I do. I'm telling you, though, our fight is bigger than that. It is way bigger than that. And if you don't get that, you're going to find yourself hurting. This whole Trump facade, it's just meant to make Hillary look just that much more acceptable. It's that much more. Look at, look at the Republicans defecting to support Hillary. There's a reason for that. Folks, my fist is up in the air if it wasn't holding this damn phone. My fist would be up in the air and I would be just like full-throated screaming. I want every one of you to find your faith, find your conviction, and start spreading the news because what we're facing right now is an enemy that isn't going away. It's not. But we're going to bear the weight of the consequences of our inaction if we don't remember everything we know, if we allow the fear to make us do things we know are wrong, we'll only have ourselves to blame when the shit comes down. This is Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives. Have a wonderful weekend.